China's leaders have repeatedly concluded that the United States will do anything to stifle their peaceful development. In Washington, White House officials are adamant that China is plotting to become the world's leading power, then imposing its rules on the rest of the world. Most experts agree that the competition in the 21st century is between the U.S. and China. If World War III happens, the greatest risk stems from this confrontation. On May 27, 2023, former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger turned 100. No one today has more experience in international affairs than he, first as a scholar of diplomacy, then as a national security advisor and Secretary of State. For the past 46 years, he has acted as a consultant and special representative for heads of state in certain events or cases. He once said of the current U.S.-China relationship, both sides believe that the other is a strategic danger. We are in a period of fierce confrontation between great powers. Recently, The Economist had an interview with Kissinger about how to prevent confrontation between China and the U.S. not lead to the war. What did former Secretary of State Kissinger say? Let's find out in FBNC World Affairs. According to The Economist reporters, recently, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger has been stooped and difficult to walk. However, his mind was still very sharp, as reflects on the next two books about artificial intelligence and the nature of alliances. He was more concerned with the future than rummaging through the past. He is concerned about the increasingly fierce competition between China and the U.S. for technological advantage. Even if Russia could fall into China's orbit and the Ukraine war brings global attention, he still believes that Sino-American competition will decide much bigger issues. According to Mr. Kissinger, science and technology are changing the global balance of power. Military power also changed. Rules for maintaining stability may not be in place in time to adapt to new situations. Therefore, force can be used more often. He continued, Sorry, We are in a reward war one situation problem. where neither side is willing to give in so, politically. Then any disturbance that causes an imbalance of power could lead to dire consequences. Former Secretary of State Kissinger was criticized by many as a hawk for his role as one of the architects of the United States during the Vietnam War. However, he made the study of conflict the focus of his life. After witnessing what the Nazis did to the Jews and suffering the deaths of 13 relatives in the Holocaust, he believed that the only way to avert conflict was tough diplomacy, ideally diplomatic strategy underpinned by shared values. However, in the 1970s, his view changed when he advocated re-establishing relations with China. He believes that the fate of humanity today depends on whether the U.S. and China can get along. The rapid advancement of artificial intelligence, making the confrontation more complicated. They only have five to ten years left to find a way to live peacefully together. Kissinger has some advice for Western leaders. The first is, determine where you are and where your opponents are. In that spirit, the starting point for avoiding war is to analyze the causes of China's growing insecurity. Despite his reputation for being pro-China, he admits that many Chinese thinkers see America as on the verge of decline. Therefore, according to the transition of history, sooner or later, America will also be replaced by China. This is the premise for China to be tougher and more angry at Western policies they are not satisfied with. Let's be sure this Chinese thinking is wrong. America and the movement will always develop and be superior to the Iron Fist administration of the Asian power. According to him, the Chinese leadership does not like the Western concept of a rules-based global order. They often criticize because the law is made by Americans and the order is also made by the U.S. China's leaders feel inferior if they follow the rules set by the West. Many Chinese scholars assert that the U.S. has never treated them equally.
However, Kissinger also warned that the West needs to understand China's wishes as well. At the present stage, do not focus too much on the concept of wanting to dominate the world. The logical answer is that China wants to be more powerful and more respected. China is trying to play a global role. It is necessary to assess at each moment and in each area whether the goals of China and the West are compatible. An example of fighting climate change, the United States should strengthen cooperation with China, as the administration of President Joe Biden is doing now. In issues such as the South China Sea Corridor or the Taiwan Strait, the U.S. must maintain its military strength so that China understands that if they take risks, the possibility of failure is real. Kissinger remembered that during President Richard Nixon's first visit to China in 1972, only Chairman Mao Zedong has the authority to negotiate on the issue of Taiwan. There were issues. After being prompted, Chairman Mao Zedong replied, Let's bring me at Joe online and advisor Kissinger discuss. But when it comes to Taiwan, Chairman Mao Zedong was adamant. There are many elements who go against the revolutionary trend. Not now, maybe a hundred years from now, but one day we'll have to deal with it. Currently, the geographical distance is quite far. Kissinger believes that neither the U.S. nor China want to handle Taiwan issue by force that would destroy the world economy. China's leaders also fear that if the war does not yield expected results, it could create instability in the homeland. Therefore, China's top priority remains peaceful reunification. With the United States, they do not allow unification because that will help China increase its power and weaken Washington's influence in Asia or globally. Therefore, keeping the current status quo is a temporary solution. Both sides need to avoid actions that make other party angry. Not a fan of policymakers, Mr. Kissinger suggested that the two countries have a small advisory group that regularly work and reach out to each other. This will be much easier than the official meeting. Basically, neither side will change its position regarding Taiwan, but the U.S. can share with China about its plans to deploy troops near the island. China could also share how it reacts when tensions rise. These will minimize the risks of collision. Kissinger's second advice to Western leaders is to identify very target and enlist everyone. Fight every means to achieve your goal. Taiwan is the first place where the superpowers need to find a common voice to maintain global stability. In a recent speech, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen suggested that the economy and combating climate change are the remaining goals. Mr. Kissinger did not object but did not agree. On climate change, he wants the U.S. to do more, to create confidence in other countries. Even the U.S. should put pressure on Europe to reduce coal use. At that time, many developing countries will lean more towards Washington, forcing China to follow if they do not want to lose partners. About economics, he believes clashes are inevitable. The United States cannot contain an already too powerful China. Finding a way to live in the peace Treasury and accepting the economic aspects of conflict of but not letting it get too hard um, to can be the, the optimal solution. Have, Some um, Americans believe that if China loses the competition, it will become a democracy. Mr. Kissinger did not believe this. To According to that. him, if China goes down, instability leads to civil war, which will only cause more global difficulties. America does not benefit in this situation because the risk is too high. According to Mr. Kissinger, the current conflict in Ukraine, while the West cannot influence Russia, but China can. Chinese President Xi Jinping has only been in contact with President Volodymyr Zelensky over a phone call. Some see it as a cliché intended to appease Europe, who are angry at China's role. Former Secretary of State Kissinger said that China has serious intentions. They are the only party that can talk to both Russia and Ukraine. The West should take advantage of China's role both in peaceful connection and in building mutual trust. Although he condemned Russia for attacking Ukraine, seeing it as a violation of international law and the UN Charter. Kissinger also said that the war was not entirely from Russia. NATO wants to admit Ukraine, wants to turn Ukraine into a threat to Russia, is really a mistake. 
This move made Russia angry and took action first. China has reason not to condemn Russia, so they can talk and maintain dialogue with Russia. With its role, China can help end the war without setting the stage for a new war to arise. According to him, if there is a ceasefire, there is a high possibility that Russia will retain Sevastopol and the Crimea Peninsula. Other territories, Russia should hand over to Ukraine as much as possible. Maybe the Ukrainian people will be dissatisfied with this, but returning the Crimean Peninsula to Russia is the best way to ensure stability in Eastern Europe. In NATO Regarding Greece, Ukraine, he is skeptical of NATO's desire for peace when supplying weapons. He said, in my view, what NATO is doing is extremely dangerous. They supply weapons to Ukraine that the Eastern European country becomes a huge ammunition depot. The Russians will never leave a threat on their doorstep. And, uh, to establish a long peace in Europe, Kissinger suggested the West should take measures. First, it is possible in the long run to admit Ukraine to NATO, both to contain them and to protect them. However, not now. Best when things have calmed down. Second, the West should maintain cooperative relations with Russia to keep the Eastern Front stable. He believes that keeping good relations with Russia is not difficult. Russia has no global ambitions. Russia just wants peace and does not want to be threatened in the post-Soviet space. Many Western countries might back down if China joins as Russia's ally and NATO's rival. At that time, the task of the West related to the Ukraine war would become more difficult. China has great interest to see Russia stand firm after the war. A collapsed Russia could pose many risks to China. For example, the West is focusing all its efforts in confronting China. More diplomatic support for Taiwan or even Central Asia is at risk of falling into instability. After Xi's call with President Zelensky, former Secretary of State Kissinger believes China may be positioning itself to mediate between Russia and Ukraine. As one of the architects of bringing the U.S. and China together against the Soviet Union, he doubted that China and Russia could and, work together uh, to do same against the U.S. The However, according to him, to Russia and China have the instincts left by history. They do not completely trust each other, he continued. I have not met a Russian leader in person who has spoken well of China, nor have I met a Chinese leader who has spoken well of Russia. They are not natural allies. They only bonded temporarily because they have a common rival. Kissinger said that China participates in mediation in Ukraine in its national interest. While refusing to condemn Russia, China also recognizes that Ukraine should continue to be an independent country. Beijing opposes the use of nuclear weapons. China does this in part because it does not want conflict with the United States and does not want Europe to lean towards Washington. China is creating its own world order to the limitation it can. Another area where China and the U.S. need to talk is artificial intelligence. Kissinger admits even experts in AI do not know its full power. Artificial intelligence will become a key factor in international security within the next five years. He compares the potential of AI to the invention of the printing press, a tool to spread ideas that contributed to the devastating and wars in the uh, 16th and 17th and centuries. He warned, we live in a world of unprecedented devastation, destruction from the outside to the inside of human beings. Internal destruction leads to external destruction. New weapons help humans destroy each other very quickly. Every country, strong or weak, has the potential to be vulnerable. Therefore, China and the U.S. need to control their power. They can limit the threat through arms control negotiations, he continued. I think we have to start talking to each other about the impact of new technology. 
We have to take small steps towards arms control, where each side presents the other with details of the capabilities it possesses. The secret is that leaders must be strong and wise enough to understand that AI must not be pushed to its limits. If used too much with non-transparent purposes, it will lead to destruction. Kissinger's next advice to Western leaders is to link all of this to domestic goals. For the U.S., it is necessary to learn how to become more pragmatic, focus on leadership qualities, and above all, renew the political culture. In particular, an issue Mr. Kissinger wants to reiterate that sometimes the ethical factor outweighs the benefits, making morality even worse. He acknowledged the importance of human rights globally, but wanted flexibility. He recalled the case of Sudan. The United States regularly criticizes Sudan for human rights, which has frozen relations between the two countries, gradually pushing Sudan into isolation, creating conditions for fractional struggles, leading to civil war like today. Those who want to change the world, Mr. Kissinger argues, are often idealists and pragmatists. They apply when the policy is favorable to the country, sometimes without the need to follow the rules. India is a counterweight to China in Asia as power grows. However, they also have poor records in religion, justice and journalism. Despite the criticism above all, relations between the U.S. and India are still good. Mr. Kissinger highly appreciates the U.S. policy towards India over the years. India is increasingly showing that it has a great contribution to the development and equality globally. Tens of millions of doses of COVID-19 vaccine donated to Africa are concrete examples. After the Sino-Indian border conflicts broke out, New Delhi banned a series of Chinese apps, including the social network TikTok. Now they have reduced one concern about China's ability to psychologically manipulate young people through mobile applications. Kissinger admits that the 24-hour news and social media make his diplomatic judgments more difficult. The same is true of other leaders. Therefore, India's decision to ban TikTok is extremely wise. Leaders sometimes reflect a country's political culture. Kissinger, like many other Republicans, is concerned that American education is now focused on the country's dark moments. He continued, To achieve a strategic vision, you need to have faith in the country. Common sense of American values is disappearing. Let's reduce the role of social networks like TikTok. They are distracting society. Let's focus on core American values. Talking about the U.S., Mr. Kissinger was not satisfied with the current two leading politicians, former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden. And, He said, uh, I think they pushed hostility the to the forefront, over cooperation. Excessive stress can Some lead to violence like the January 6, 2021 incident. It was a dark moment in history. America will fall behind and give China an opportunity to rise if the internal divisions continue like this. According to him, America needs long-term strategic thinking, not term-based. Otherwise, it will be difficult to implement big policies. Once America goes down, China goes up, which will create a global imbalance. China can impose its own rules. The rest of the world will face a dark period. And that has wrapped up our program today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.